Let me open up in prayer. Father God, we thank and we praise you for just who you are. We thank you, Lord God, that you continue to watch over us and show us your compassion, your love. And Lord, we could never say how thankful we are for you. Father, when your word says that it is you that translated us from the kingdom of darkness into your marvelous kingdom of light, it was only you and only you alone that could do that. And right now, Lord God, I pray that every heart, every ear is open unto your word. And I yield myself completely and totally to you, Holy Spirit, that you speak through me. Let it be none of me, but all of you. I thank you, Lord God, that in this service and in this church, that all the gifts and the offices are in full operation. I thank you, Father, for those that will be healed, those that will be delivered, those that will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this day. I take authority over any distractions in any way, form, or fashion that it shall not be, Father, within this service. I thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. And let the Lord and let us all say amen. amen. Well, you know, it's been a I don't know about for y'all, but it's been a long trying week. Seemed like it was ten days in this week. <laughs> but praise God we made it. Amen. Amen. First Lady sends her love. She's at home. She had a couple of challenges, you know, this morning. But God is still in control. Amen. 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 You know, what I want to talk to you about today is about foundation. Okay. A lot of times we don't understand what it means to have a firm foundation in something. And when we, when we really stop and think about a house, an office building, you know, it's amazing how we could ride down the street and we could say how beautiful that building is. Uh, we can go to somebody's house and say, man, Jeff, you got a nice house, man. I like the paint job. I like the windows. We can come by your house, Fab, and say, oh, what a beautiful couch. We can acknowledge all the exterior things. But how many times have you actually heard somebody say that's a beautiful foundation? No. Because see, a foundation is not built for its beauty. It's built for its sturdiness, its strength. So when people admire the doors and the windows and everything that's on the exterior, they must also understand that the only reason that those things are standing it's because of a solid foundation. We just had an incident in Florida a month or so ago when there was a collapse of a, a condominium, okay? And you know, I watched that thing several times when it happened, a little short video, of how quick it was to fall, okay? And then those of you that's old enough, you remember when we had the North, uh, the North Ridge earthquake, okay? And the only thing that saved the students is that it happened outside of school time because the, con the complete uh, parking lot structure failed. And then after, you know, they did an investigation and did a study in regards to that, they found that it was some faulty material that had been used. You see, when storms, when storms, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, when they come, that's when the foundation is tested. It's not until that time that the foundation is truly tested because there is now being pressure put on that building. I want to look at a few scriptures regarding foundation, okay? One is in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 through 22. When it, we talk about a foundation, I want you to understand to have a solid Christian foundation is a necessity. Is a necessity. What do I mean? I mean to, to, to have a, a prayer life, to be able to really truly praise and worship God. And some people have a problem with praising and worshiping God for the simple fact is that they feel they don't do it right. 
There is not a wrong way to praise and worship God. It's just merely saying, Lord, I thank you. Sometimes you may not even have a full sentence, but you could just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we have to get away from thinking that there is a formality, ways that you have to do a certain thing. Because if I do one, one thing one way, that doesn't mean that Randall's going to do it the same way. Now, the way Randall does it, I might really like it, Jeff. I might really like it. But it's just not me. You see what I'm saying? I have to do what's comfortable for me. And see, the Lord knows who we are. So, I like when I hear Linda say, Father. You know, it's the way that she says it because it's coming from her heart. Do you understand? You know, when I go speak to Father. You know, um, my friend... Apostle Michael Freeman, I like the way he says Holy Spirit. He never puts the in front of it. He always says Holy Spirit. And over the years, I start picking up that. I took the the out and just say Holy Spirit. Because see, if I call you Jeff, I don't say the Jeff. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So if you add Ephesians 2, let's look at it. It says, So then, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household. Members of God's household, verse 20, built on the foundation, built on the foundation of apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. Keep that in mind, the cornerstone. In him, in Jesus, the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple into the Lord. In him, you are also built together for God's dwelling, for God's dwelling in the spirit. Now, now, now first, you've got to understand what a cornerstone is. See, a cornerstone was the most important part of a building because it was from that stone that the foundation was laid. It was from that stone that the straightness of the building would come. If the cornerstone was not straight, if the cornerstone was weak, then the foundation would be weak. It was only a matter of time before it would give. Okay? The cornerstone, and keep this always in mind, the cornerstone is also the key in keeping the wall straight. And when I looked this up and I wrote this down, I thought about it and I said, well, the cornerstone is also important in keeping us straight. That's Jesus. I said, you know, because you have to understand that what Jesus came to initiate was his church. Was his church. When he told Peter, when, he, when, he, when Peter said, you are the Messiah, you are the anointed one. And Jesus' reply was, it's off of that I will build my church. He wasn't talking about Peter himself. He was talking about the revelation that Peter had of who he was. That's what the church is built off of. Because see, your revelation of Jesus is what got you into the kingdom of God. It wasn't your duties and, and all you did. You could have did pie sales, barbecue sales. You could, you know, be in this department in the church and that department in the church. But it's not that that got you into the kingdom. What got you into the kingdom is recognizing that Jesus is the son of the living God. That Jesus is the Messiah. That Jesus alone is our savior. See, I always tell people, don't look at salvation like a word. You need to see it like a man. Because <laughs> he is our salvation. So a cornerstone is the main stone. <laughs> and let's look back at Ephesians. You're still there, 219. And it says in verse 20, built, built on the foundations of the prophets and the apostles. With Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. Let's, talk, let's stop right there and look at that. The cornerstone is laid first. And it's the most important part of the foundation. This scripture tells us. That the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. So what is that saying? 
It was the message that the apostles and the prophets were preaching to the people that laid the foundation. What was that message? That Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. So there's your foundation. See, you have to have that solid foundation. And then it goes on in 20, verse 22 and it says, In him, in Jesus, you too are being, being, being. Being means that you constantly in action to be built God is constantly building floors on you God is constantly changing things in you God is constantly working on you that's why the scripture says in Philippians 1 and 6 in this I am confident in this I am confident that the work that God has started in me he will complete you see you are a work in progress. This is what I want people to understand. They are a work in progress. So he says, and you in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Well, that's verifiable right there because if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says, do you not know that your, your, your bodies are the temple of the living God? That your bodies are the temple? I mean, do you see, we don't, I don't know why we can't catch this. God is living in you. He ain't visiting you. He in you. See, but we feel that we are so unworthy. We are so dirty. That God can't be living in me. He was me just visiting with me. That's incorrect. The Bible says that your bodies are the, are the temple of the living God. That's what scripture says. See, and you got to catch this. The Bible says that you did not choose God. Scripture says he chose you. Do you see what I'm saying? See, you got to come know if you come to a party without an invitation, use a party, what they call them, a uh, 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 party, party crasher. See, you got to understand that. But if you got an invitation, that means that you've been chose to be there. Do you hear what I'm saying? You've been chose to be there. And see, that's why God chose you. He chose you just like you are messed up from the flow up. Do you understand? Yes, he knew what was happening with you. He knew all the things you did. He knew it was all the things you were going to do. But he said, I, I can work with this. He said, I can work with this. Uh-huh. He says, yeah, I can work with this. See, you got to understand your mistakes, your mishaps. They don't throw God off. Because he knew already. But he says, I can work with this. So when we talk about a foundation... Our foundation has to be built off of Christ. Now turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 through 5. Now just stay with me because I just want to go over a few scriptures about foundation and then we'll get into the, the meat of this. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15, it reads like this. Just give me an amen. I'm going to wait. Give me an amen when you get there. Give me a chance to take a break too. Huh? <laughs> chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 10 through 15. And the reason that I want to talk about foundations is because we build foundations on different things. We build foundations off of, 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 off of relationships we build foundations off of families we build found but that doesn't mean because you got a foundation is the right foundation do you understand what i'm saying yes. <laughs> so first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 through 5 10 through 15 says according to the grace of god which was given to me notice what paul says here as a wise say that with me wise come on let's say it together wise builder not a foolish builder he said a wise builder you know and then he even put something in there some of your translation will say a wise master builder <laughs> he, 
Yes, as a wise master builder. See, a wise master builder is an expert. It's a person that says, I know how to build. He says, I'm a wise master builder. Then he goes on and says, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. What is he saying here? Paul was saying that the messages that I have preached to you, I laid the foundation of Christ. Then there's going to be others that's going to come and they're going to build on that. Now that the foundation is built, now you start building rooms and floors. Do you see what I'm saying? This is why your teachings start to trans transpose to different areas. Because now when you start to learn about faith, faith is a floor. Now when you learn about prosperity, prosperity is a floor. When you learn about healing, it's a floor. When you learn about deliverance, it becomes a floor. You're building a house. See, you're building a house that you can walk through. See, some of you, you have the family room. All right, you go to the family room for certain things. You kick it, you sit, watch TV, but then you have a kitchen. You go to the kitchen, what do you do? To cook. Well, see, when you allow the solid foundation of Christ and you start getting the correct teachings, you're building a floor. You're building up something. You're building a structure. But as I said before, if your foundation is faulty, when the storms of life come, when the tornadoes in life come, when the hurricanes of life come, when the earthquakes of life come, when these things come and your building is shaken, well then... All the floors that's in that building is going to crumble. Why? Because the foundation is not good. He says, I am a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one, let each one, that's you and me, take heed how we build on it. You know, see, heed is old English, you know. I'm going to put it where y'all can understand it. Check yourself on how you're building okay yeah I know you got that one all right for no foundation can anyone lay other than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ I want you to understand that in laying your foundation you're going to have to have a solid relationship with Jesus a solid relationship with Jesus that means a relationship where you're spending time with him that means a relationship where you, 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 you have a common hookup with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people's time that is spent with, with Christ is hit and miss. It's when they're in trouble. You know? See, that's why many people, when they do do something wrong or they do get in trouble, instead of running closer to Christ, they run further from Christ. It's because they don't have a foundation. See, if you know the man that you're following, if you know the man that saves you, if you know the man that's able to heal you, if you know the man that's able to guide and direct you, then you will really want to spend time with that man. The only reason you do not is because you don't really know the man. See, you know of the man, but you, that doesn't mean you know the man. See, the man means that, hey, look, you know, when, look, 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 people. What is different in the, in the relationship you have with Christ and the relationship you have with your husband or boyfriend? What is the difference? It is really none. You spend time with them. The only real difference, thank you, Holy Spirit, Jesus ain't going to lie to you. Jesus ain't going to let you down. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, that's the only difference. But you're going to have to establish that relationship the same way you would with any other relationship. But you got to stop thinking that God doesn't want to talk to you. Why would he want to talk to me? Why wouldn't he want to talk to you? He created you. He saved you. He delivered you. Why? So it says, no one else can lay any other foundation but Christ. Verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw. So now, Paul is saying, there's different things that you can build, different materials you can use to build on this foundation. Human reasoning. Mm -hmm. Self-confidence. Mm-hmm. Tradition, 
But he says, with you can build with with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay. All right. But it, then it goes in verse thirteen. Check what it says. Each one, that's you and me. Each one's work will become clear for the day. Now a lot of people say, "What day is that?" That's the day of the return of Jesus Christ, or when you stand before the, you know, the beam seat. That day. All right. And for those of you that don't know what the Beamer CD is, you know what? Sign up for our school, so, so Faith, ha, Bible College, and Leadership. Wasn't that a good plug? <laughs> hey, hey. All right. It says that we have different things we can build on, but all of our works, that's every one of us, our works will be tried. It says each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort of material it was now what is that saying i mean people do things not because of the love of christ they do things just for recognition you know so what do you think that when that work hits the fire it's gonna burn up you see because you just wanted to be seen you know see so you have to you have to really ask yourself when you're doing things where is your heart in the midst of doing it do you understand what I'm saying you know there's people that do things for people and they don't ever say anything about it don't nobody know it but them and God okay and it's nothing wrong with 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 with, with letting people know what God has blessed you to be able to do there's nothing wrong with that but where it comes into question is this if you're saying it to boost up yourself and not Christ that's wrong that's wrong you know there are people that learn the Bible not because they love Christ because they just like to argue they really do I mean I know a lot of people like that they just want to debate like wow man I, mean, I just said praise the Lord now you want to get into Hebrew and Greek uh, you know all oh, that ain't necessary it's really not you know see people have different motives you know so it says your work's going to be tested with fire <laughs> and if anyone's work which he has built on endures he will receive a reward you know he says when your work is tested by God if it stands, you're going to receive a reward. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But now check this. But he himself will be saved. What does that mean? That means that when the crowns come out, you understand me? You know they say in the scripture in, in the book of Revelations that your rewards, you're going to you know, have different you know things to distinguish your rewards and your crown you might end up with a baseball hat but you still in heaven <laughs> you know but people say hey man <laughs> you know he said but you will still be saved we want to do works that will last it's not about the multitude see so many people think because you know I'm how do I say this it's not so much the size of your bank account. It's more the size of your compassion. Let me put it like that. If you have a large, if your compassion is large for God's people and the work of God, trust me, your account going to match up with it. Why? Because God knows he can put something in your hand and you're going to do something for the kingdom. See, he, he know you. He know you. See, that's what makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. Think about many of you right now. You'll be in the market and see somebody and you pray with them or share with them or give them a smile. Sometimes you ain't got to just sit there and give them no 20-minute sermon. You know? I mean, no, you could just give a person a smile and tell them just simply Jesus loves you. Sometimes that's all people need to hear. You know, it, it blessed me with, with um, Israel Houghton's testimony. And you could check it out on YouTube. That when his mother was pregnant with him and her being white, the dad being black, her family, you know, 
cutting her out, uh, you know, just, just abandoning her because she was in an inner uh, relational marriage, all right? And she was thinking about having an abortion. And on her way to the abortion clinic, she sat down on the curb on the sidewalk and was crying. And a woman walked up to her and just told her, sweetheart, God loves you. That's all that woman said. She didn't talk to her about no abortion. She didn't talk to her about nothing else. She said that. And that woman said that's what's changed her attitude about aborting her son. It was just a word. And know that look who he is now. That he's used over the world as, a, as one of the most prominent worship musicians. But it was just a word that she gave that mom. That's all you need is a word. That's all. Mm. So take heed. Pay attention. We need to give close attention to how we build and the materials that we're building on. You know, I shunned it. Listen. 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 As people of God, look. God wants to have such a solid relationship with you. We have become so easy to be distracted from that relationship with different things. That's what the enemy uses. He uses busy time. He uses TV time. He uses all types of things. Because see, in our mind, we think spending God, spending time with God requires for us to sit down for four or five hours, you know, read the Bible, take another three and pray. That is not, you know, come on. Spending time with God is just saying that, hey, you know what, Lord? I'm going to spend this next 15 minutes with you. How you? Have you ever asked God how he doing today? You always tell him how you doing. <laughs> it's just something. Lord, how you doing today? I know you doing great, but I just thought I'd ask anyway. You know? Lord, is there anything I can do for you today? Because I've asked you for so much over the last week. You know, that's all. That's, that's what we do. That's what a relationship is. That's what a relationship is. To think about how there was situations that you didn't know how you were going to get out of. And God brought you out. God brought you out. See, God cared for you and he still does today when you cannot care for yourself. I tell y'all, I, you know, I know ain't none of y'all, so I talk about me. God has gotten me out of some of the most craziest things. I've been like, Lord, Jesus, I ain't going to lie. I've been like, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I knew why them old ladies in church, they start stomping their foot. <laughs> yeah, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, because I didn't see no way out, Lord. <laughs> see, you got to think about them times. Uh-huh. See, you got to think about them times you in the motor pool lane, you understand me? You ain't got no business in the motor pool lane, and then you get over, and then all of a sudden you see the police. You go, oh, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> see? See, them the times you got to think about. Uh-huh. Time you getting ready to send some clothes to the cleaners and you, you decide to make sure and check there ain't no trash and nothing in your pocket and you go in there and find a 20 or a 50. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. See, you forget about them times. See, God wants you to remember those times. It's not all about the big thing. It's not all about the big things. Start thinking about what he's done in the smaller things for you. Because see, those are the things that will encourage you in your heart moments. See, look at the relationship. You having a bad moment in a relationship and you think about the flowers that Jeff sent you. You might not, you know, you might not be as mad as you was, but you're going to smile. Do you see what I'm saying? See, you think about these things, that's having a solid relationship. That's saying, hey, I ain't never too busy for God. I ain't never too busy for God. You may be riding down the street and God wants to speak to you and you know it in your heart. You find a safe place and pull over and say, Lord, what is it? 
See, you're telling, you're showing God that you are willing to stop whatever you're doing for him. How many times do we ask him to stop whatever he's doing for us? Mm. See, that's building on a solid foundation. See, that's building on a solid foundation. When there's nowhere to turn but up. And he's always coming through. May not be when you want him to come through, but my God, he comes through. Yeah. Do you understand what he's saying? Mm. So when the storms of life, floods of life, the hurricanes of life, the tornadoes of life hit you, the only thing that's going to keep you standing is your foundation. And don't think that you're not going to have one of these storms hit your life. You may be right now going through one. You may be experiencing one right now. But it's your foundation that's going to keep you. See, in the midst of a storm or earthquake, the building shakes, yes. But for the cause of the foundation, it doesn't crumble. So you may be going through something right now that's shaking your life. But because of your foundation in Christ, that's what's going to keep you stable. See, for you to think that things in life will not come into your life, that's just being naive. Who drives a car and thinks they'll never have a flat? I mean, really. These things happen. There's some things that will happen just because you are alive. Do you hear what I'm saying? But you've got to make sure that the foundation that you have built will keep you through the midst of whatever it is. You know, um, we have a fire now up in some parts of California, burning pretty bad. They say it's one of the worst in history. I watched some clips of it. But some of you know about that last fire that we had uh, a year or so ago. It was pretty bad. Well, when you look at the houses that are burnt, do you notice that all of them are gone, but the foundation is still there? They got something to rebuild on. See, if everything gets tore down, you got a good foundation, you got something to build on. And that one was amazing to me. I was, you know, I was just going through the internet and I seen a picture and, you know, half the wall was, you know, up and the rest was gone. But I seen the foundation. I said, ooh, they got something to build on. See, no matter what happens, if you got a good foundation, you got something to build on. You got something to build on. See, the foundation of a house, it tells you actually how big that house can be. You cannot build a big house on a small foundation. It won't, it, that's not going to happen. So your foundation will determine how big your life will be. See, and you got to have that foundation. You have to start growing in your prayer life. You have to start growing in your praise and worship. You have to start growing and uh, and opening up the scriptures and reading the scriptures, whether they're in the Bible, on your phone, on your iPad. You understand me? However, you need to get, you need to put them before your eyes. Why does the DMV check your vision? Really? To make sure you can see where you're going. Well then. God is telling you. Start reading my word. Where you can see where he's taking you. You done been to the places you took yourself. <laughs> We're going to leave that alone. <laughs> I see people start going like this. Hey, you know about that? <laughs> yeah but you know. So now it's time for you. To start letting him direct you. See, the Bible says that there are ways that seem right to a man or a woman. But those ways are death. See, some things may seem right to you, but the end result is not going to be what you want it to be. <laughs> so we got a lot of different options of what we can really use to build our foundation of our lives off of. But they're not godly things. We got popular culture. Some people think that just because something is popular, everybody's doing it. 
I'm going to do it. <laughs> I just, you know, read not too long ago about some people on that TikTok. You know, people were doing a certain challenge and they died trying to do that challenge. They were doing it because it was popular. You know, one young girl wanted to have popularity so much that she climbed up on a, it was like a, 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 a crane while she was, you know, doing her TikTok and fell off and died. Another one, it was a TikTok thing. They were doing something. I can't think exactly what it was. But she tried, they tried to do it, and they died. They were trying to do something that seemed popular to gain popularity. It seemed right in their eyes to do this. But the Bible says the in ways are death. Now death doesn't always mean, you know, graveyard dead. Don't mean that. You see, there's, there's three types of death in the Bible. There's a graveyard dead death. That's where you're in the casket, in the ground. And then there's a death where you're separated from God because of sin and your behavior. All right? But then if you confess your sins, you can reestablish that relationship. All right? But that's a death. Then there is eternal death. That means that you want to live it your way, do it your way, the way you want to do it, to hell with God. I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. And you die. That means you are in eternal damnation. You are forever parted from God. There ain't no get back from that. You know, where you end up is your residence forever. Whether you like the establishment or not. You ain't going nowhere. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, so there's three types of death. So the Bible says that there are ways that seem right, but the very end of it brings death. Could be one of those three. Then there's people that just like tradition. You know, you know, tradition, you know. Our church ain't a traditional church. We teach a traditional word, which is from the Bible, but we're not traditional. What do I mean by that? We go with the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? See, if you're so traditional, the Holy Ghost be trying to take you left and you just gonna stand right there. Mm, I'm going nowhere. Because my mama did it this way, my grandpapa did it this way, and my great great grandmama, they all did it this way. And I'm gonna do it this way too. That's tradition. That's foolishness. There's people that's listening to me now. You in a church, the only reason you in that church is because, man, your grandmama, your mama was in that church, and you know you ain't learning nothing. Go find somebody to go to church where you can learn something. Yes. Amen. See, so we got to watch out tradition. And it ain't, uh uh. And then it's that human reasoning. <laughs> God gives us the ability to reason. Yes, He does. All right. And we are able to use that. But when human reasoning starts to conflict what God says, you better go with what God says. See, human reasoning says that having a baby without having sex with a man just ain't gonna happen I know some smart spring will say well they got they, they, they do sperm injection now well, we ain't talking about that we talking about the regular way okay well that, that's beyond human reasoning For Jesus to raise from the dead is beyond human reasoning Okay? For God to tell you you got to die to live, that's beyond human reasoning. That means you got to die to yourself and live for Him. That's, don't, see, there's a lot of things that's beyond human reasoning. That's why you got to be careful about human reasoning. If it conflicts with the Word of God, you need to check yourself. See, faith can never be explained with logical human reasoning. Cannot happen. You look at me all strange. What do you mean? Everybody look at me. Man, should I say something wrong? <laughs> should see the looks I got. It can. When you praising God for an increase in your and your bank account is double negative. Alright? And somebody you pray, you you tell somebody, man, God, God, my bank account. God, my bank account. They look at you. That's that's beyond human reasoning. That's beyond human reasoning. Okay? 
when the doctor has told you that you're unable to conceive a child because of whatever the case may be but you tell somebody I'm believing God for a child that's beyond human reasoning when the doctor tells you you got four to six months to live and you say you know what I'm healed in the name of Jesus the doctor says that's beyond human reasoning so you cannot build off of human reasoning you're going to have to build off of what God said because human reasoning will always conflict faith. All oh, them people like to build off emotions. If you build, if you, if you use the material of emotions in your foundation, you're going to be on a ride worse than the one in Magic Mountain. They call it the Big Dipper, Dipper Big, whatever it is. <laughs> you're going to be hitting roller coasters and dips you're going to be just like those people screaming ah! and see them rides ain't no joke because I'm going to tell you pastor was on one a few years back <laughs> yeah but let me tell you what happened Jeff I got on there you know the kids was you know we took the kids to Magic Mountain and I'm going to roll with the kids I got on there and had my video camera <laughs> have a video I'm going to video the kids right and so, you know, we're going up, and then you know how I go. I'm cool. Thank God I had the video thing on my arm. We cool, right? And they laugh. Hey, bass, hey, bass. And then we get up to the top, and I ain't realizing where I'm at, right? And I'm just, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, hey, that's it, uh huh. And then we drop. <laughs> From that's the last thing you see in me when I was like, hey, hey, hey. And then all you hear after that is me praying. <laughs> You don't see nothing but the bottom of the, you know, the thing you sit in and you hear me praying. And I told the Lord, I said, if I get off of this, Lord, I promise you, I'll never get back on again. <laughs> and, and then when you come off, they got pictures of you, you know. <laughs> oh, look at here, them kids climb me. Look at Bassy, look at Bassy. Man, I was like, Whoa. oh my God. So you don't want to live your life like that. Hitting them curves and them dips, all right? That's what emotion will do for you. Now, as I get ready to close, I want to remind you in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24. I actually start at 21 through 27. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 27. It reads like this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. That's where I started at. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, listen to this closely. Lord, Lord, did not I prophesy in your name? Lord, didn't I drive out demons in your name? <laughs> and didn't I perform miracles in your name? Then Jesus says this. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me. He didn't say that they had. He said, I never knew you. You see, people can do things and they look good, but their motives are wrong. But then he goes on in verse 24 and says, after he tells them this, I want you to catch it now. Now he comes in verse 24 and he says, for those that have ears, hear what I'm about to say. Now he just got their attention because you know, they, you know, well, 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 who going to heaven then? Now he says, for you that have ears, he's giving you now a key that you need to pay close attention to what he is about to say next. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its crash. You have 
two people that are hearing the same word because if you go back the same conditions hit each house the same condition it said the rain came down the stream rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it did not fall alright hmm <clears throat> Then the rains and all of that hit the next house and it did fall. The only difference was the foundation. That's the only difference. Both houses were built. One was built on a rock. One was built on sand. And when the conditions of life came, the one that was on the sand was not able to stand. What is this teaching us? You have a choice of where to build your house. You can either build it off the rock, which is Jesus, or you can build it off of sand. That's you trying to tell yourself what's good for your building. We must understand that this Bible, it, it was given to us to learn. See, a building will either stand or fall depending on its foundation. The foundation that's built upon your life will either fall or stand determining the foundation that you build off of. And I told you three of the ingredients, just three of the ingredients that I gave you today was praise and worship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Prayer. And your word. Because see, if you are praising, if you are in a position of worship and praise to God, if you are in a position where you're praying to God, if you're in a position where 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 you are are, are are doing these things, reading your word, your faith is going to grow. Your faith is going to grow. But see, I'm gonna give you another example. When we see fruit growing on a tree, it is the root that produces the fruit that you see on the tree. It's not the limb. It's just on the limb. But have you ever seen where some are good fruit and some are bad? Uh-huh. And it's on the same tree. It's because you have to do something now with the root. Because the root, somewhere in the root, is not right. See? And that's why they will tell you to start using uh, certain nutrition things for your, your trees, your garden, and stuff like that. They will start to tell you that. All right? Why? It's because you got good and bad fruit. So a lot of the things that we deal with, we also can produce good and bad fruit. I mean, we can say, you know, walk down the street and, you know, say, hey, how you doing? Praise God. And I love you. And God love you. That's good fruit. And then we can get in the car and go down the street and somebody say something to us and we, ah, you know, you know the finger you've given them. And not, see, bad and good, good and bad fruit. See, we got to let God get to the root. We got to let God, but see, God still loves you in the midst of that. Philippians 1 and 6. Be confident of this. That the work that God has started in you, he will complete, not you. He will complete. And some of you need to understand that God's proud about you. He, 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 I mean, I'm serious. He is. And you, somebody said, what do you mean he's proud about me? I just, I, I love that kind of person. I'm going to answer you now. <laughs> if you look in the book of Job, God was boasting on Job to the devil. He said, hey, devil, you see my man Job? He, 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 he rolled and he doing it my way and the devil said well he got this hedge around him that you put around him and you protecting him he said if you take that down I'll make him curse you to your face huh. the devil said it's on man he said it's on one thing you can't do you can't kill him do everything else but you can't kill him because the devil already let me put it like this. God already knew what his man was going to do. It's like God already knows what you're going to do. And God is boasting on you. He's saying, you know, you know my daughter, she ain't like she was last year. I'm still, I'm still working in her. She's still a work on the progress, but she ain't like she was last year. Amen. 
you should be saying the same thing about yourself. See, man, look at here. Y'all can see whatever you want bad in me, but you better start looking at the things that's good in me. I don't care. I don't care that Louisville slugger back up under my seat no more. <laughs> I won't curse you out for 10 minutes. I got it down to a minute. You know, I mean, people, I'm realistic. You know, have I ever had a moment like that? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Sure did. Had to catch myself, too. And had to apologize to the Lord. Apologize to the person. I had hoped to God it wasn't on, on, on YouTube. <laughs> but we do have those moments. But that's where God will work you through those moments. Don't run away and talk about, oh, I'm not a Christian because I made that mistake and because I did that. Oh, my, no, that's the wrong thing. You say, yeah, I made that mistake, but thank God my father is compassionate and loving. Thank, thank God that I have built my relationship off a solid foundation. And I know because of what I did, I'm not going to be cast away. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope you do. I hope you do. So remember, praise and worship. Do that. Start getting in the habit of doing that on your own. And I have to confess, I have to, you know, start working more on mine. I have my praise moments, but I, I know I can increase them. And I thank you, Lord, that this message has not only been for those that have heard it, it has also been for myself. To bring me back to a realization, to self-check my own foundation check myself to see if I've allowed any wrong materials to be in my foundation you know understanding the importance of God's word how can we say that God is so important in our life but his word is secondary when his word and him are one that can't be you can't have it that way prayer is no more than communicating with God just talking to him saying Lord man Man, Lord, I love you. Just, Lord, I love you. Thinking about those times that were so hard that only he could get you. See, there are moments in your life that nobody but you and God know how hurt you were, how devastated you were. Only you and God. Only you and God. Because you got up, put on your big girl, your big man face, and went out into the world, but nobody knew that you were bleeding inside. See, think about those moments that he's gotten you through. Think about those moments. Never forget them. Never forget them. Think about those times when you could not talk to anybody but God. And you may not even have anything to say. Because sometimes, you know what, your tears are a language. That's why the scripture says God holds your, your tears in a bottle. And you know that's love. You can look that one up. I can't think exactly where it is. But he says, all your tears that you have shed, God keeps them in a bottle. And I looked and I said, Ooh, you got a big bottle for me, Lord. <laughs> you know? And I know men, oh, men don't cry. Men don't cry. You was a lot. Men do cry. We do cry. We hurt. We hurt just like anybody else. And I grew up. I grew up with that stigma. My dad used to, men don't do this. Men don't do that. And I grew up like that, man. And I grew up to the point that it made me hard. It made me hard. It made me hard. And because of that wrong teaching, because of that wrong foundation, from the time that I was three years old until the time I got saved, which is at 30 years old. There's not a picture that anyone has of me smiling. And that was because of that. Not one. Not one. I was always rock solid hard. Because of a wrong foundation. I don't want you to miss any more of your life. I want you to enjoy your life. That you have walking with God. It's fun with God. Because it's a journey where you don't know where you're going. But you know wherever you're headed, you're safe. <laughs> you don't know who you're going to see on the way. But it's going to be interesting meeting the people. 
See, this journey with God is so beautiful. Enjoy your journey. Amen. Amen. For those that are watching on YouTube, Instagram, um, Facebook, or wherever you're watching from, <clears throat> I'd like to give you an opportunity to allow Lord Jesus Christ into your life. You know, we laugh, we have a lot of fun with God's Word. The Holy Spirit is very lenient with me in how to deliver God's Word, and I appreciate that. He tells me to deliver it the way I am. But when I come down to offering salvation, this is not a time to joke. Because God loves you. I'm talking to the backslider. I'm talking to the ones that have never accepted Christ. The Bible says, taste and see if he's not good. I challenge you, try. Try. Don't let the hurt that people have caused you in the church or in your family to keep you from God. Romans 9, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was born through a virgin, walked this earth, he was put on a Christ cross, crucified, he died for us, he rose again, and today he sits at the right hand of the Father. If you could believe that, then that's all you need to believe to get into the kingdom of God. Just say, Lord, I give you my life. You may not know everything that is going to happen, but the one thing that I can promise you, that anything that does happen, you are with the right one. If you're a backslider, okay, you've made mistakes, but don't let another day go that'll keep you separated from God. Come back. Come back. This is the best place to be. Come back. Come back. And if you've accepted Christ today in your life, hey, find you a good church. Find you a good church that's teaching the Bible. Ask God to direct you. Find you a good church that's teaching the Bible. Yes, I would love to see our church grow. But I'm more interested right now in the body of Christ growing. You see, that's how my job is done. And seeing people come into the kingdom. So with that being said, I am Pastor Miller, the great I Am Faith Center. I love you, and I'm out. God bless.